Welcome to the Antidote to Deception, a program dedicated to exposing the deceptions and those who manufacture them. Thank you for joining us.
I want to be is like Jesus to be like Jesus to be like Jesus all I ask is to be like him all through life's journey from earth to glory all I ask is to be like him Hello friends and welcome to the Antidote to Deception radio program presented by the Word Master. Today we begin looking in depth, in detail, and definitively at the book of Romans. Not everything will be covered, not every scripture will be reviewed, but it is our hope that key points, key doctrines, key verses, the most important principles of truth will be brought out. I'm not sure exactly how long we'll go on in our study, but by the grace of God, it is our hope that by the end of the study, by the end of the series, that you will indeed have gained a rich experience. Dear friends, the book of Romans is slowly becoming one of my favorite books of the Bible. Chapters 12, 5 through 8, Chapters 3 and chapters 9 are actually becoming some of the parts of the Bible that I dwell in most often of late. Formerly, my favorite book was the book of Revelation, another art book, and my favorite verse in the Bible actually comes from the third art book, the book of Ruth, Ruth chapter 1, where Ruth tells Naomi, entreat me not to leave thee. And strangely enough, this is what happened in the book of Romans. After memorizing chapter 5, the book of Romans did not leave me. I began to study further into it. I began to go in detail in certain chapters and verses. began to realize certain things that in the book have been misunderstood by the majority. And so, friends, what I've learned, what I'm learning, is my desire to share with you. And so I invite you on this wonderful journey with me that will begin right after this. Please join us during the month of June on the Antidote to Deception website as we look at the topic, June Moon, Modifying Our Oral Nature. It promises to be an exciting, amazing, interesting look at how we can overcome the world, flesh, and the devil. For more information, 
please stay tuned to our website at theantidotodeception.com. God bless. This book is one of the most wonderful in the Bible. In the lessons before us, we shall be able only to touch, in the briefest manner, upon the general outline of the book. We shall expect to find things we cannot understand, even as we cannot understand how the infinite God upholds the universe by the word of his power. We believe that which we cannot understand, because God says so. Approaching the study of the Bible thus, we place ourselves where God can unfold and explain to us the mysteries of his word. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we begin this Book of Romans series, we invite your presence to be with us. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask your God to come and be the one who is in control of this lesson. Father, take control of our lives. Do for us, dear God, that which we know we can't do for ourselves. Enable us, empower us, enrich our lives, dear God. And at the end of this study series, dear Father, may we be better for it, we pray. For Christ's sake, amen. As we begin this study, let's keep several things in mind, friends. We will not be able to cover every single aspect of our series that we would love to cover, namely covering the entire book, chapter and verse. So we'll just do a general overview of several of the verses. No matter how many weeks it will take us, we'll go through all 16 chapters of the book of Romans and dear take out the nuggets of truth that God is seeking to enrich our lives with for the next 16 studies or so as we look at the book of Romans. Let us begin by reading verses 1 through 15, Romans chapter 1 verses 1 through 15. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God which he had promised afore by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, concerning his Son Jesus Christ our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh, and declared to be the Son of God with power, according to the Spirit of holiness, by the resurrection from the dead, by whom we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name, among whom are ye also the calls of Jesus Christ. To all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. For God is my witness whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his Son that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers. Make in request, if by any means, now at length, I might have a prosperous journey by the will of God to come unto you. For I long to see you, that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift, to the end you may be established. Verse 12. That is, that I may be comforted together with you by the mutual faith both of you and me. Now I would not have you ignorant, brethren, that oftentimes I purpose to come unto you, but was let hitherto that I might have some fruit among you also, even as among other Gentiles. I am debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. And verse 15. So as much as is in me, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome. Also, these 15 verses are introductory. The first seven comprising the salutation, the remaining eight being personal explanations. Yet in these verses are some of the richest passages in the Bible. As in verse 12, when Paul states that he expected not only to minister to the church on his visit, but to be ministered to by it. Both were to be comforted by their mutual faith. This does not contemplate a condition of the church in which the minister must spend his energy in combating error and settling differences between brethren. In fact, it shows that this church, the church at Rome, is at such a spiritual high 
that unlike the epistles to the Colossians, unlike the epistles to the Ephesians, and very much so unlike the epistles to the Corinthians, Paul doesn't spend his time chiefly in combating problems within the church. He clears up a few doctrinal errors, but that's not his chief idea. He combats those who will come back against the church, but that's not his chief idea. He wants to show that both Jew, Gentile, Greek, barbarian, rich, poor, whoever, as he would show in the next few verses, may receive the gospel. In fact, one of the most beautiful verse in the entire Bible is verse 15. So as much as is in me, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. Why, you ask, is this one of the most beautiful passages in the entire Bible? Because, as you know, the end of the story what happens to Paul. Paul was determined, Paul was very determined of all places that he wanted to go. He wanted to go to Rome. His mind was set to go to Rome. In his estimation, he figured if he could preach the gospel to the emperor, then the gospel received by the emperor will disseminate to the entire world. Again, that was in his estimation, so he longed to go to Rome. But having not gone, but yet sent his epistle before him, it did a mighty work, friend. It encouraged the church that was already established at Rome. It encouraged the brethren to mount up in zeal. It encouraged the brethren to vigorously preach the gospel, even at Rome. It encouraged the brethren to pray for him, which eventually resulted in him coming to Rome and thus fulfilling his mission of preaching the gospel before the emperor of Rome. Friends, these 50 introductory verses show the true heart of a Christian. He longs to be a missionary. As soon as one is converted, like we see in Zacchaeus, like we see in the other original apostles, their first thought was to go and tell. As we see in the life of the original apostles, as soon as one is converted, his desire is to go and tell others. Andrew tells Peter, Philip tells Nathaniel, Zacchaeus tells others, the woman at the well tells her city. This is the gospel, and so upon his conversion, Paul was zealous to first tell the Jews, then the Gentile world, of the good news of the gospel. And so it ought to be with us. So it ought to be with us, friends. In tomorrow's lesson, we'll dig further into that 16th verse of, and we'll spend the majority of our time looking at that one verse and the verse following, Romans 1, 16 and 17. Because at the heart of these verses is the heart of the epistle to the Romans. Now in analyzing the book of Romans, we see that indeed, even though it was probably one of the last books written, that it stands first. Some commentaries call it the chief of the epistles. And indeed, if one was to study out in the book of Gospels, one would see Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John capsules in these 16 chapters. The book of Romans is the clearest explanation of the Gospel. Then you have the epistles to the Ephesians and the Colossians, which complement the book of Romans. Friends, when you have time, my encouragement to you is to delve into the book of Romans. It is a book that, at heart, beautifully complements any Bible study. If you have time on your own, go through the book of Romans systematically and develop a Bible study on your own. In fact, I would recommend to you a beautiful book entitled Bible Studies on the Book of Romans by E.J. Wagner. Again, it's Bible Studies on the Book of Romans by E.J. Wagner. You can look it up online and download the PDF version. And I could also tell you how to get a hard copy 
a free hard copy and I'll let you know at the end of today's broadcast. But friends, as we continue in our introduction to the Book of Romans, one of its most enlightening passages, friends, to me, actually is found within verses 9 to 12. For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers, making request, if by any means, now at length I might have a prosperous journey by the will of God to come unto you. For I long to see you, that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift, to that end ye may be established. That as that I may be comforted together with you by the mutual faith both of you and me. Notice how Paul begins his epistle. Compare this with, as we said earlier, Corinthians, Ephesians, Galatians, Philippians, Philemon. Notice how Paul has to deal with certain doctrinal errors, certain moral failings. Notice how he's had to combat certain others who is coming up against his ministry. But here in the book of Romans, it's chiefly encouragement. It's chiefly a lesson, a study in hope, assurance, and as we studied previously, salvation to the Jews. Their friends, understand this, that as we delve into the book of Romans, what we are doing actually is a systematic study in the book of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John explained. What Jesus said is given commentary by the Apostle Paul, and he beautifully gives a synopsis of the entire gospel. Friends, we are on a great journey, and it is my prayer that as we study out these things, that you may come into line with the message of the book of Romans. That as we go forward in our study series, that you may be blessed. But most importantly, friends, the book of Romans deals with salvation. Salvation to everyone that believes, as it says, even right here in chapter 1. So my prayer for you is that you will believe. God bless you. Thank you for joining us today on the Antidote to Deception radio program as we began our look at the Book of Romans. As mentioned in the lesson, you may receive a hard copy of the Book of Romans by E.J. Wagner by calling area code 954-478-4673 and request a copy of the free book, Bible Studies in the Book of Romans by E.J. Wagner. When you do call, also request any free CDs or DVDs that deal with the study of the Book of Romans. Friends, again, as was mentioned, this book, the Book of Romans, is a beautiful explanation of the Gospel themes that are taught by Jesus Christ himself. And so as you have time, please make it a matter of study to go over the entire book on your own time. Go over especially those chapters that we will deal with on our Tuesday studies in the book of Romans, Romans 5 through 8. Every Tuesday we look at the theme, June Moon, Modifying Our Old Nature. But I also recommend for your understanding, Romans chapter 2, 3, 9, and 11. Dear friends, this is a great journey that we're undertaking, and it is by no means exhaustive. If it were, it would actually take us forever to get through to every point that is so richly brought forth in the book of Romans. But that book as mentioned, Bible studies in the book of Romans, and those CDs and DVDs that are being presented are done so with the hope that you may gain a richer understanding of what is hope to be expressed in the book of Romans. We will continue our study tomorrow by looking at Romans chapter 1, verses 16 and 17, where Paul says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel. These two verses are indeed the heart of what comes after 
in the next several chapters. May God bless you as you study, and I pray that you invite your friends, family, and loved ones to listen to these broadcasts. Please join with me now as we have a closing word of prayer, and then close out the program. Let us pray. Father, who art in heaven, we thank you so much for your patience with us in teaching us. Father, we know that we will not understand everything, but by and by, will understand the things that are needful for our salvation. Father God, we invite you to be the Lord of our lives. Take full control of us, dear God. Keep us sheltered beneath your wings, O Holy Father. And it is my prayer, it is my aim, dear God, that as you continue to do that which only you can, dear God, I pray for one thing and one thing only, that your people will understand the importance of studying. Father, give us a rich experience. May we fall in love with this book of Romans. Father, may we memorize, may we keep key passages, keep key verses in our hearts. Because we know, dear Lord, that there's a time coming that it will be necessary for us to call to mind these important truths, not just in our memory, but in our lives. May we live out the principles, dear God, of the gospel in the book of Romans. Bless us now to this end, we pray for Christ's sake. Oh,